Welcome to mini lesson 16. So we did statistical mechanics of the photon gas in the last lesson. And what we're gonna do now is use the STATMEC result that we have to go through and do all the thermodynamics of the photon gas, which is a little bit unusual. And I'll end this mini lesson with a little bit of a challenge that if you care about this kind of thing, will really give you an idea of just how unusual it is. <clears throat> We're still in section 7.4 of Schroeder. And the result that we got last time by applying um, quantization of photon energy and Bose-Einstein occupation of the energy levels of the photon gas is that the internal energy of the photon gas goes as the fourth power of temperature proportional to volume, I guess that makes sense, right? It needs to be an extensive quantity. And so this is an expression for internal energy as a function of temperature and volume. And so in some ways it's ana analogous to the expression that we obtain by equipartition arguments for the ideal atomic gas, right? Where we had the internal energy was equal to number of degrees of, number of quadratic degrees of freedom divided by two times N kBT. And so one thing that we also know is that this equation is basically the same as the ideal gas law. And so if you know the ideal gas law, you can sub in PV for NKBT. If you don't know the ideal gas law, you can actually use Newton's second law of motion to derive the fact that PV is equal to two thirds U, and then you'll get the ideal gas law by applying this. So. In some ways, we can also view this expression that we obtained in the last mini lesson as an equation of state for the photon gas. Uh, but we do want to manipulate it a little bit more to make it sort of look more um, simple uh, and to give us some better ideas about what physics it's trying to tell us. And so in some ways, what we're doing in these slides and what you should try to do yourself uh, is a review of how to use thermodynamics, right? So we've got, we use STATMEC to get a thermodynamic quantity U, and now we've got this massive formalism of thermodynamics that lets us manipulate U to get anything else that we need, any other macroscopic quantity that we need in the realm of uh, thermod thermodynamics. So um, make sure that you are able to do the things that are being done in these slides um, by yourself. It's a really good review, and of course, the final, the final's coming up. So, U as a function of T and V is not sort of standard. We consider the natural variables for U to be entropy and volume and particle number. Particle number is gonna be really strange in the photon gas, so Keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, so we need to be careful with how we use the expression for u. So when we have u as a function of t, uh, the best place to start is typically with the constant volume heat capacity because that's explicitly uh, defined as the partial of u with respect to t under conditions of constant v. I'm not writing the n here. Um, you'll see the reason for that by the end of the slides. N is, N is an unusual macroscopic variable in the photon gas because it is not fixed. It can't be fixed. Uh, and so the idea of holding it constant ends up being a little bit screwy. All right, so it's easy to take the partial with respect to T in this expression. So you get the constant volume heat capacity is 4B, where I call B all this junk up here, right? Like I don't care what these numbers are. Um, 4b times v times t cubed. And so if you could measure the heat capacity of the photon gas, this would be a useful quantity. In fact, I'm not aware that anybody ever really measures the heat capacity of the photon gas. And so it's actually the purpose of 
calculating C sub V in this case is that we can then use it to calculate the entropy of the ideal photon gas. And so we do that by this expression, S is equal to the integral, and this is basically dq over t, where we've written dq as cv times dt. And so I put a prime on the t to make it a dummy integration variable. So we're going to integrate from absolute zero up to whatever temperature t we care about. Using the third law of thermodynamics, the absolute entropy at absolute zero is zero. And so we get this result that the entropy of the photon gas is four-thirds BVT cubed. So again, this is actually a fine formula for entropy, but it does have non-natural independent variables. We typically expect entropy to be a function of U and V. Right? <clears throat> In other words, all the formalism of thermodynamics that we've built up considers S as a function of U, V, and possibly N. And so this function by itself is not enough to let us go full steam ahead with thermodynamics. We could rebuild the whole formalism, I suppose, in terms of this function, but that seems like a waste of time. Um, right, so just to make clear what I'm saying, let's say we want to calculate the pressure of the photon gas. That's a really important quantity. It's an important quantity for your homework that's due on Friday. You know, and it's something you could really measure, right? Like you could put um, a pressure sensor in front of a black body and see what kind of forces per unit area are applied by the radiation. Radiation pressure is a real thing. So if we want to get pressure, we need to calculate partial of U with respect to V at constant entropy and particle number. Right? So we can't apply this definition to this formula above right? because there's no entropy for us to hold constant. Um, there's also no particle number, but that's not going to be important. However, what we can do is use the two formulas that we derived to get the kind of expression we need. So we have u as a function of t and v, and we have s as a function of v and t. And so we can solve for uh, temperature in terms of s from this expression, and then substitute this temperature up into here, the t to the fourth, to get u as a function of s and v, which is going to allow us to apply our full formalism. So we do that and we get this u is equal to something that's a constant times v to the minus one third. And then we take the derivative of that with respect to volume at constant entropy. And particle number just doesn't appear here, but I wrote it out anyway. Um, and so then you get this expression, and we'll sub back in for s and use the fact that u over v equals b t to the fourth. I'm doing the arithmetic here for you, but you should be able to do it yourself. If you look at this and think you understand it, you will not be ready to do anything like an exam in any reasonable amount of time. So do this by yourself. And what you get is that the pressure is equal to one-third b t to the fourth, and b t to the fourth is u over v. So the pressure is one-third u over v. So this is one-third times the energy density. That's really cool. Uh, so another way to write it is that PV equals one-third u. And so why don't you just compare and contrast that with what you would get in the ideal gas case. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's something you should be able to think through and talk about and sort of try to understand what are the differences, what are the similarities, if there are any similarities. So this is, I think, a fairly clear equation of state for photon gas. Another way to say that is a, it's an equation of state for a relativistic gas. Right? So any gas uh, where the momentum of the gas particles is so large that the PC part of the energy is way, way bigger than that m squared c to the fourth part of the relativistic energy expression. Uh, will actually end up looking like this. So this goes, this actually goes a bit beyond just photons. <clears throat> All right, well, let's just keep going and do some more thermodynamics. Again, you really need to do this. I love putting stuff like this on exams because it just sort of forces you to think through thermodynamic formalism, 
for a circumstance where you really don't have very much um, common sense intuition or um, or at least you don't think you do so let's consider the enthalpy H and so H we know is the Legendre transform of U that we do in order to swap the independent variable of V to get an independent variable of P right? so this is just the definition of enthalpy so if you want the the physics intuition, right? It's the energy to create the system from nothing plus the work done to move, uh, to create the space needed for the system under constant pressure conditions. So let's just substitute in, all right? PV equals one third U. So we do U plus one third U and we get H equals four thirds of U. Right. So this is actually fine. I mean, there's nothing totally wrong with this. Importantly, it shows enthalpy is bigger than U, which it better be because it includes both internal energy and work done at constant pressure. Um, again, if you're thinking about how to use thermodynamics formalism, you need to get this as a function of S, P, and possibly n, but again, for photons, we're not worrying about n. So you need to do some substitutions. <clears throat> uh, and so you can try to do that by yourself with the results that we have already in this, in this, uh, these slides. All right, <clears throat> so let's talk about the particle number issue though, because I keep saying it's weird and I hope you believe it. So the basic idea is we've been completely ignoring n and that's because n is not fixed, right? So in order to be an independent variable, sort of experimentally, you need to be able to exert control over the variable, right? So like in an ideal gas of atoms, you can design an experiment where you have put a fixed number of atoms, let's say it's a mole, right? So six times 10 to the 23rd atoms inside a box. And then you can do experiments on it and that n is almost always going to stay the same, right? Unless you're doing some kind of weird chemistry or poke a hole in the box or something, right? And so if you keep this box closed and add some energy, that's what this red thing is. Um, the temperature of the gas in the box will go up, but the number of particles will not increase by just adding energy as heat, right? So that's increasing the average kinetic energy of the atoms, but not their number. The situation is different for a photon gas. You do the same experiment, so start at some equilibrium condition in an isolated black body, so that's a box of photon gas, and now you add energy in the form of heat. What happens is you actually create more photons in the black body the number of photons goes up to attain the final temperature that would somehow put the gas in equilibrium with, which, with, 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 with whatever it's transferring energy to <clears throat> in the outside world. So you don't just make the temperature go up when you transfer energy to a photon gas. You also make the particle number go up. In other words, those two things are inextricably linked it's not really possible to have n as an independent variable. Uh, it's best to just think of t as the key independent variable and n just adjusts so that t is whatever you need it to be in your problem. Let's see how this works. We can actually calculate n already starting from our statmic principles. So hopefully this idea is starting to be familiar to you. To calculate the total number of particles using quantum statistical me mechanics, we're gonna sum up basically the number of particles in a level of energy E multiplied through by the density of levels at that energy E. So in other words, how many levels are there and are they occupied given the temperature T? And so we'll run through the analysis kind of the same way we did for internal energy, where we convert, where we write everything out in terms of energies and then sub in X equals E over KBT. So that substitution factors a KBT quantity cubed out of the 
integral. Um, and then you're just left with this integral of x squared dx over e to the x minus 1. And so again, this is just some number, and the number is, happens to be 2.404. And so the number of particles in a photon gas is a bunch of constants times v t to the t to third power. Right? So I'll write all these constants as r. Um, and so it's very similar to internal energy, uh, except the constants out front are different numbers. So these are basically the, a summary of the results for the thermodynamics of a photon gas. Again, you really need to work through some of this by yourself and also possibly think through some different things for, uh, to talk about. So internal energy is some constant times Vt to the fourth. Particle number is some constant times Vt cubed. Right? And so I think looking at this, you can kind of get a feeling for what's going on, right? n can't really be an independent variable because it's a function of t and v. And so anytime you're changing t, you're automatically changing n. Um, and then we're also able to show using the thermodynamic definition of pressure that PV equals 1 third U for the ideal photon gas. So if you're thinking of something to challenge yourself, Think about trying to calculate the constant pressure heat capacity for the photon gas. Um, you can try to turn the crank on thermodynamics. I think you will find it's not easy to turn the crank for that particular quantity, and it's kind of interesting to think about why. Um, so give it a try. This is, this is actually the most challenging conceptually to do for the thermodynamics of the photon gas. Um, you could try some other ones, like what's the Gibbs free energy? Uh, what's, the, what's the grand potential? That's interesting because we know grand potential is the right potential for thinking about quantum statistical mechanics. Um, and so if you like the topic of the photon gas, you can take a look at this paper by Leff and others. Um, it derives these results, and in fact, I use their notation for B and R. I think they use B. I can't remember, actually. I know they use R. <clears throat> All right, so next time we're going to move away from the photon gas to the next section of Schroeder, which talks about how to derive analogous results for sound waves in a solid instead of electromagnetic waves in a solid. So we'll see you next time.